Hello folks, today we're going to take a look at analog to digital conversion techniques. We've already seen the basic idea of PCM and how we take a digital signal and turn it into the analog signal. How do we do it the other way? Okay, well there's a bunch of different ways we can do this, pluses and minuses on each way. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is called a flash converter. The big advantage of a flash converter, as the name implies, is that it's very, very fast. Essentially what we do is we get a bunch of uh, comparators. And I'm only going to draw a few of them here. And I'm not going to draw the pluses and minuses and so forth. But essentially, we're going to take all of these and put them on a, uh, like a little resistor totem pole kind of thing. This is going to be the reference voltage for each one of these, right? So I can have, you know, more of these, but I'm just going to draw the, the four of them. So this establishes the reference voltage, right? I'll just put a minus in there, whatever. And then each one of these inputs will be tied to the proper analog input signal. Now, what do we have coming out of here? Well, what's going to end up happening? Now, if we were to be very simple about this, and let's say this was one volt, and we had this set up for like, um, you know, uh, half a volt, three quarters of a volt, a quarter of a volt, you know, like that. And I throw a signal in, and it's a little over half a volt. Well, this guy's going to go high, this guy's going to go high, that one will be low, right? If this is the 5 volt reference, and that's the quarter volt reference, that's 3 quarters. So this is high, this is high, that's low, that's low. Right? That's what we call unweighted binary. Now, we take that signal, or set of signals if you prefer, and we run that through something called a priority encoder, this little digital chip. Right, so all these lines come into our priority encoder, and then coming out of the priority encoder is weighted binary. In other words, normal binary that we think of. Done. Well, that seems simple enough, right? Well, what's the downside? Lots of comparators. Like how many? Well, you have to have a comparator for every single value. So if you have n bits, right, like you get 8-bit digitizer, you need 2 to the n comparators. Yeah, so for 8 bits, that's 256 comparators. That's a lot of comparators. And 8 bits is not, you know, super, super high uh, resolution by any, stre any stretch of the imagination. So yeah, it's extraordinarily fast, but it becomes unwieldy if you have um, large resolution. Now there is a way around this. You can do what's called a, uh, a two-step converter, where um, maybe you have like a six-bit converter, and you get the top six bits. Then in a second thing, you sort of scale that signal by whatever that six bits value is, and you redo it to get the, the remainder of it, right? So you sort of, sort of subtract off the coarse guess from the original signal. You have a residual. You scale that residual up. You do this in a second pass. Okay, so now you have a 12-bit converter, basically. It's not, you know, nearly immediate like the flash is, but it's still pretty darn quick. Kind of, kind of a convoluted process, though. But it does work. The other one, so that's like number one, right? You're... you're Sort of second one, which is not nearly so hardware intensive, is um, a step or successive approximation converter. So the way that works, I'm going to do this in sort of two variations. We're still going to have a comparator, but we only have one. 
here's my input signal. Now what I'm going to do, the other input to the comparator, is going to be the output from a digital analog converter, right, a DAC. What feeds the DAC? So this is multi, you know, multi bits coming in here. Well, the simplest thing you can do is have an up counter. You know, it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. Now, what will end up happening is you'll wind up with uh, the output of the DAC looks like this. As the counter goes 0, 1, 2, 3, you're going to get the stair step coming up. Right? 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. At some point, this is going to overtake whatever the input signal is. The comparator is going to change state, right? And essentially, this right here is your sort of conversion complete logic. And you can tap off here, have a little latch. And the conversion complete basically just sort of says, okay, you know, we've got our signal, we're good to go. Once this thing gets up to its, you know, final value of all ones, it just flips back around to zero and counts up again. Okay? Problem with this is it's crazy slow. Because again, for n bits, you need to the end comparisons. So instead of comparators, you need comparison comparisons. Ugh, I'll figure that out. If um, your DAC was a one microsecond DAC, it could do the conversion completely in one microsecond, and you had a 16-bit converter, that's over 65,000 individual comparisons, so it would be 65,000 microseconds or 65 milliseconds. Ugh. So, you know, that's great if what you're trying to digitize is a 5 hertz signal, but it's not going to work for audio, that's for darn sure. But there is a very simple upgrade to this. And that upgrade is to use, instead of an up counter, we use a successive approximation register, right? an SAR. Now, what that essentially does is it produces a series of values. Instead of just going from zero up, it produces a set of values bitwise working from, LS, uh, working from MSB down to LSB. So the very first value that it's going to produce I'm going to sort of set this up like yay. All right, top nibble, bottom nibble. Very first value it's going to produce is this. So it's halfway up. Okay? Now the comparator output's either going to be high or low. If the comparator is telling you that the, the input signal is bigger than this, then I know this must be a 1, and now the question is, What's this bit? So it'll set this to a 1 and see if the input is still bigger. If it is, it'll go on to the next one. Now, if it's not, in other words, if 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, is higher than the input, then we'll simply reset this back to 0. Go to the next bit. So what we do here is the number of comparisons is n. Oh, that's way better, rather than 2 to the n. If I have a 16-bit converter, that's only 16 comparisons. So this thing is way fast compared to using an up counter. This is kind of like, um, you know, there's a little parlor trick you can do, which is uh, you can tell someone, hey, think of a number from uh, 1 to 1,000. Don't tell me the number. I'll bet you I can guess this number in 10 guesses all you have to do is tell me whether my, e whether my guess, each guess, is higher or lower than your actual value. So your first guess is going to be 500, right? So let's say that, you know, the person's uh, original value is 400, just to throw a number out there. So he says, oh, you're, um, you know, you're too big. Oh, great. Right there, I've already thrown away. 500 possible values, right? From 500 up to 1,000. They're gone. They're history. So now I cut it in half again, and I 
say, well, 250. Now the person says, oh, that's too small. Okay, great. So there's no worry about anything below 250. I know the value is in between these two. So I'll guess 375. And they say, oh, they're still too small. Great. So now I know it's between 375 and 400. Right? I'll split the difference again. So that, um, that value keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You can see, I mean, within a very short period, I've really narrowed down, you know, in and, and just three guesses. I know the value has to be somewhere between 500 and 375. And this is just going to keep on going. Okay? And in fact, we will get it in, in 10 guesses. Why? Because 2 to the 10th is 1,024. They're basically doing this. Every time they say you're high, you're low, they're basically setting or clearing one of these bits. You know, um, we say 1 to 1,000, 10 guesses. It sounds like, oh, you know, this is really nice. Jeez, 10 out of 1,000, that's only 1%. Yeah, sure, I'll give you odds on that. No, you're crazy, right? This little sort of binary search is guaranteed to work, right? So this turns out to be a very um, simple kind of technique that's relatively fast. Not as fast as a flash, but it's still relatively fast, and you can uh, have modest circuitry. Downside, what if the input signal changes while you're doing this? Well, right there, we're probably going to put in something called a track and hold amplifier. Basically, it locks onto the input signal. In the old days, we used to call these sample hold amplifiers. But basically, it just clamps onto the signal. So that way, you can do this while it's while the input signal is actually changing. All right. um, also, we're going to uh, make sure that we have to have um, up front here an anti-aliasing filter. Don't forget that. Right? We need an anti-alias filter. So you know the F2 there has to be. Uh, somewhat less than the sampling frequency divided by two. Um, another possibility, which I'm not going to discuss here, but for, for uh, very high resolution converters, uh, we now use a technique called delta sigma. Sometimes it's called sigma delta. This is a very, very high speed oversampling technique where we end up with a whole bunch of, of samples of re low resolution. And then we go through a process called decimation where we take this sort of pool of, of low quality samples, if you will, low resolution samples, and through a mathematical process, we can derive one high resolution sample. So this thing might be oversampling by, you know, a factor of 256 or something like that, um, you know, compared to the, uh, the uh, Nyquist-Shannon sampling rate. So that's something else that we'll see, right? But that gives you a pretty good idea of, of you know, what's out there and what we're going to do.